Jeremy Clarkson. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, it's a bit of a weird moment for both of us. One, apparently I look like your daughter's boyfriend. No, you don't look like my daughter's boyfriend. I'm absolutely convinced you are my ah. daughter's boyfriend, though I re- didn't realise I had such a massive tattoo. Yes, I uh, have to cover it up every time I yeah. see you. Uh, and then the, the weird part I'm, on my side is that uh, I've probably watched every single thing you've ever done since you had the ridiculous hair back in the 80s. You mean hair? Yeah. Just some hair. Thing, yeah. You know, and the war documentaries and the, the inventions that changed the world. And like I'm, I'm 30, but I've been watching you probably more than half my life, which makes you... Oh, sad to know. And now it turns out you look exa- and sound exactly the same. See, this is you've a, even got the same... Are you from Dublin? Yeah. He's from Dublin. This is really, really <laughs> Are we ever going to talk about the Grand Tour? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have an obscene amount of vehicles, I would say. Some are, well, some are like really expensive. You've gone through a lot of cars, you know, before GT. If you could just pick one, which would you pick? And it can be any of them. Now, mm. that's an interesting one because I have said for 10 years the best car I ever drove was a Lexus LFA. Okay, yeah. Not like any Lexus that you're bank manager or your accountant drives. This is a, a completely different animal and it was incredible and it made the most astonishing noise and I always wanted one. But the car I used in Madagascar in the next Grand Tour we're doing, which hasn't even been cut, we just got that. Um, that's now the best car I've ever driven. I I'm, I'm can't tell you what it was. It is a car though. It is a car? It's a car, it yeah, yeah, a car. yeah, we're back to cars. Okay, back to cars. It's a complete car. Uh, it was mm. absolutely, I've never known such a heroic vehicle. Yeah. So determined. Okay. <laughs> Strong. Strong. Um, mm, you was. you suggested that they they go to Vietnam and Cambodia in this first episode of the new season. Mm-hmm. Have you ever suggested to do something and they just said, "No, Jeremy, can't do that." No. No. No, I'm much taller than them. <laughs> no, honestly, if the story's good, both James and Richard are wise and clever enough to go. No, that's if the story's good. Mm. The story has to be good. Um, the problem we have these days, if I may be serious for a moment, is so much of the world is now inaccessible. Yeah. I mean, not that long ago, we landed in Iraq, drove into eastern Turkey, dropped down into Syria, went from Syria into Jordan and into Israel. Mm. None of that is now possible. The whole of North Africa, with the exception of um, Morocco's out, the Sinai Peninsula's out, Egypt's out, we're all everything, right down to the Sudan. We've done everything in the south. South America, Chile, riots everywhere. My favourite, one of my favourite countries on earth is Chile. That's difficult to get into. Argentina, literally nothing to see there. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got all the stars. It's, politics is making the world harder and harder and narrowing the areas where we can actually operate. Ireland is always there. You know. Always Ireland. But they, the Trump, no. I can't. You went there once. Hammond went there once, I think. To he did and drove an MX-5 yeah. at Mondello. He did. Yeah, and up the Dublin Mountains, which is where I test the cars. That oh, is it? Uh, no, I, yes. I'm, well, there's a lot of, yes, I, I'm going out with an Irish girl. Well, living with an Irish girl. Um, so she's quite keen that we should go. Back there, post Corbyn. No, wait. Sorry, I was said that out loud. Um, yeah, no, she's Dublin. My eldest daughter goes out with an Irish guy who doesn't look like you at all anymore. So, yeah. Has it waned away now that I've had a bit of a chat with you, or is it still like? No, yeah. it's still your okay. voice is exactly the same. <laughs> um, I've watched your videos on F1, the current state of it. Yeah. Did you watch the Brazilian GP? I know exactly. No, not just that one. I mean, since I put that thing online about you know they're just it's ridiculous and they all need to have smack bottoms. Um, the next six races were fantastic, and then Brazil. What the hell was that? It was just unbelievable. The restarts, the, the safety. The guards. restarts, and then I genuinely thought that Verstappen and and um, Hamilton had actually changed twice. I didn't realise he'd actually overtaken Alden, who he then crashed into. I mean, and then the Ferraris crashed into each other, <laughs> and that was just. And then, of course, along come the spoil sports, the VAR, yeah. the stewards. Oh well, now. Well, I don't, what did you did you think that Lewis deserved a five second? I mean, I'm no Lewis fan. Well, it cost him a lot of places, but he did really dive down the. It's just similar to he what was, Ricardo did. He was did on to another Hulkberg track. Yeah. I actually yeah, said before the impact, I was like, "What's he doing yeah. out there? If you're trying to defend, mm. here's a tip: <laughs> close the door. <laughs> Get a little bit nearer to the apex than that." Um, no, so I has it changed was... your mind? Are you back on board? No, I was weirdly. Okay. I was talking. 
um, just two days ago with Paul Stewart, who ran the drag team for a long time, this Jackie Stewart son about oh, okay. it. And apparently he put it around, that video went all around F1, and everybody sort of agrees. It's just, what do you do about it? Mm. They've got to get rid of the stewards, and they've got to have stronger cars. Yeah. So a little bit of... I mean, if they do that now, oh, everything flies off. The and Ferraris. Race is over. Mm. Yeah, the Ferraris, it was that. You've got to have tougher cars. Mm. I don't care if they're a bit heavier. And the noise. And those stewards, gaffer tape. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not interested in your opinion. There's dangerous driving, five extra points. All right. Jeremy Clarkson, thank you. Thank you very much. Dublin's 98FM. James May. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I'm surviving. Yes. Well, mm. Grand Tour is back, and it's called Seamen. Yes. You have to say it like that, don't you? I think you are supposed to. It wasn't my idea, but no. it's a hilariously hilarious joke. Yeah. Yes. I've been watching um, you three since I was very young. I I'm know sorry it's going to make that. you yes. seem really old. Uh, and again, then on Dave, and then, you know, again on Netflix. And I, I've watched just about every episode, I'd say, at least six times each. You, you've got to find something else to do I in know. your life. Well, right? I actually do my own, like, video reviews now of cars. I started my own, like, brand on my radio program. That's a good idea, because we don't do it anymore, so yes. there's, a, there's a gap. I just robbed all your ideas. <laughs> oh, there's even Top Gear filters you can get on the internet that make it look like Vaseline is on the lens and stuff. You know? Oh, really? And the little crop thing. That you... Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can do that. So, we um, must try it. <laughs> <laughs> but you sort of, you like almost pioneered the, um, like, even your Drive Tribe videos, where you're, like, lackluster. You're like, kind of like the anti presenter uh, you just yourself and you're just like here we are now yes to be honest I, I i won't speak for the other two i can't really do it any other way yeah and i've quite in some of the things i've done recently like drive tribe and a few of my solo projects with the bbc and indeed the one i've just done for amazon on japan plug um a, a part of it is we're sort of doing that at the conceits of television yeah because some of the ideas in it are now very old-fashioned there's a lot of people in television making it who still believe that that the audience is fooled by the magic of television. So right. they edit things in a way to say, well, that couldn't have happened, but let's make it look like that. And you must, you must cut to this if you're going to do that. Whereas I think everybody, everybody makes films now. People make films on their phone. They know what's happening. So let's just show it as it is. Mm. So I'll sit there and drive a car or stand there in the kitchen and make cheesy pasta. You can, <laughs> you can watch it, or if you don't like it, you can watch you. Or you know? Yes, it's exactly. Great. I suppose we're heading for a time ultimately when TV means that each person in the world will make a TV show for one other person yeah. in the world. Yes, yes. Um, I, with, all, with all you've done in um, your career with the lads and everything, have you ever, uh, like for instance, Clarkson's, it was sort of his idea to go back to Vietnam because he was on holidays there, wasn't he? Yes. So is there anything that you have kind of brought up at a round table meeting and everybody just went, James, I don't think so? Oh yeah, all sorts of things, some of which I can't mention probably. That's the question, you have to. <laughs> well, I mean, I came at the BBC, I came up with an idea called the Antiques Bonfire, which is where people bring all their antiques to a town hall. But if your antique is no good, you have to put it on the bonfire because we need to rid the world of a lot of this crap. I came up with a show called Girls on Bikes, which everybody thought was just sexist, which well, it wasn't. It was Men on Motors? Yeah, it was, it was actually a programme about culture. Uh, I came up with the Pist Olympics. Um, all sorts of stuff like that. But one, one or two of my ideas have gone through. I mean, the original, um, this is back in the Top Gear days, when we did the Middle East special yes. about going to the birthplace of Jesus, that idea was sort of from something I said because I'd been on holiday to Syria and with Sarah. Happened. You got a... Uh, yeah, well, yes, school. when I went back, I did, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so occasionally I do have a good idea. I have a lot of good ideas that simply aren't recognized because they're too far ahead of their time. Oh. Real quick, so tell just, me about the Japan video that you shared um, the same plug there. Well, Japan is a, is a country I've always loved and I said, well, we should do a travel thing, which is not sort of a genre I really do, but I've, I've written about travel in the past. I said, we should do Japan. Um, the Olympics is coming up there anyway. The Rugby World Cup was coming up. People are very interested in it. I love it. I'd like to go. I've been lots of times. I'd like to go back and really see if I can understand what Japan is about. It's a very particular place. It has a lot of customs and traditions and, and sort of characteristics very much of its own. And we went all the way from the north to the south, and I still don't understand it. <laughs> That's the gist That's of it. That's it. I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> James May, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Dublin's 98FM. Mr. Richard Hammond. Hello. Thank you for talking to me. Absolute pleasure. I think you have been... Uh, yeah, it, it was you the last time you were in Ireland for Top Gear. You drove the MX-5 up the Dublin mountains. Do you remember? And you raced a Greyhound. 
Oh, that is a while ago. Yes, you're absolutely right. I did. This, yes, this is, is my question. A, why haven't you been back? I know. I was, we have. We've been there to do our live shows several times. That in the old doesn't days. count. It, it's Belfast. Apart from it does, because <laughs> we were there. That's right. I um, saw you. <laughs> but uh, no, we haven't. Actually, you're right, and it's a bit of an oversight because it's fun to do. Place of film. Yeah. It looks really pretty on camera. Mm-hmm. I've driven where you drove. It's where I test cars. For 98 FM, yeah. and I'm like following your route. I was like, no wonder they come up here. It's like something out of a movie. Yeah, it is. One of those beautiful it's crazy. Um, I um, have driven boats all my life. My dad has had a, a boat as long as I can remember. So when I realised what you were about to do, I immediately had anxiety, yes. especially for you and James. Yes. Because the propellers on those type of, it's just no go. It turns out you're right. <laughs> really shallow standing water. Yeah. Propeller. Not no. good. And with the show, because as, as is always the case, actually, um, you know, there's, there'll be a line of voice over Hammond got his prop stuck again or something. Mm. And so you probably see me twice jumping out the boat and standing in the water and pulling all the stuff out. Yeah. But it probably happened 15, 20 times. I spent the whole day jumping in and out of the water. Yeah. You didn't even put a cage around the propeller, which is what they do sometimes at the Grand Canal in Ireland. They have this little cage. Oh, that, I didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. That <laughs> I just watched the whole thing going. What use no. is that to me now? <laughs> Yeah, you, really? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got ill because of getting in that water, yes, and sorry. you could have saved me from that. Yep. So technically, it's kind of your fault. Yeah, or your producers. Okay, it's their fault. Yeah. I, uh, I felt really bad for you towards the end. Your face, uh, when Wait, you're going over those... This is my face. This is a bit No, rude. it was soaked. It had salt, salt in it. Salt, yeah, it was horrible. I yeah, know that it feeling. It does, does get a bit grim towards the end of that one. We just uh, didn't anticipate the weather getting that bad. And I, the, the other thing for all three of us... Because uh, Jeremy claims to be the nautical man. Mm. Yeah, who parked his boat on the land? Yes. That was him. Christ, yeah. um, so we were all three out of our comfort zone. So I, I didn't know. I don't know what boats do. Yeah. So I was blasting along in that sea thinking, is it normal for it to be vertical? I don't know. Um, I was like, trim the engine down. I don't know how to trim the engine. <laughs> you tell me that. Basically, I'd been put in an aer- aeroplane and asked to land it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Pull this. Yes. Well, I mean, I really enjoyed it. It was nice. To, I love the specials. Obviously, the specials are by far the best thing you guys do because it's just beautiful locations and you're totally out of your comfort zone. And this was really out of your comfort zone. But I will kind of miss the track tests. Will you miss them? Um, I mean, it really was a clear message from the audience that the, the, the specials were the bits they loved. Who knows what will happen in the future, whether somebody else will do. I mean, there are... Look, be honest. It's mm. quite a long time. Since anybody thought I'm buying a new car, I'm going to tune into the Grand Tour and see what Clarkson made. I bought my made Ford Fiesta it. ST because oh, of the track. That's absolutely brilliant car. <laughs> so you got? Yeah. Oh, just totally <laughs> love that. I swear, Ford will have finished making that mm. and then realised, oh my God, it's brilliant because <laughs> it, it's it's superb. I love that. Yeah, car. I love that car. You have a series of cars. You got four by fours, motorbikes, and you've got a lot. Yeah. Let's say they're all in one room. <clears throat> it's right. burning down to the ground. Of course, it's not, is it? It's all burning. I'm, I'm very gullible. You can save one. Uh, 1962 E-Type Roadster, probably. Ah, the Jack. Because it's beautiful, yeah. I've had that about 10 years, but yeah. no more. But it is a beautiful thing. Okay. Um, you crashed a lot. I, that, it has happened a couple of times. Yeah, I know. It's really, really embarrassing. Is it in your contract? No, <laughs> it's in my lack of talent. Because it started I, slowly. <clears throat> it started with you, yeah. like, crash. I think you crashed a Porsche Jeep once. You were racing a, a skydiver. Uh, that, oh, yeah. That was kind of funny. And then it happened again, and then obviously yeah. there was the... 390 mile an hour blowout. Yeah, yes. Uh, but then there was the electric supercar over the Norwegian. That was a bit poor. <laughs> that one, I thought I'd had it. I really did. I think it's because it, 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 it went off, and if you hear me on the film, I go, oh, I've crashed. And then it, yeah, yes, you have, mate. You've gone up a Sideways. mountain. And it went upside down. Mm. It hit the one end and then flipped. And I was upside down for quite a long time. And I had time to think, I've been in the air for a bit now. Yeah. That can only be bad news when it comes to landing. But and indeed it was. Now you're typecasted as, well, Hammond is going to, cr- there we go. Yeah. And it does happen. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I just, I, I, it's not on purpose to smash my leg to pieces. It's still held together with metal and bolts. Um, I didn't do it on purpose. Right, okay. But I did do it. Yeah, but it's nice that you can make a career out of it instead of <laughs> retiring. Yeah, I, listen, I have to phone my wife. That's the difficult bit. Mm. 
lying on a, has been strapped to a spine board of his blazing car to one side and a helicopter landing on the other. And I ran a sort of systems check. Can I remember my name? What am I here doing? Yeah. Yeah, right, fine. Give me a phone. I rang my wife, Mindy, darling. Um, you're going to see this on social media, I suspect, pretty soon. I've had a bit of a shunt. Uh -uh. Um, I've broken a leg and some ribs and things, but nothing that won't mend. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> this is all still good. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Well, my brain's working. Yeah. It's, it's, as well as it ever does. Mr. Richard Hammond, thank you so much for talking to me. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Hope you enjoy the show. Dublin's 98 FM. West Live, hello, Malo for 98FM. You can listen back to the interview and watch the video as well on 98FM.com. Uh, I'm just looking up obsession in the dictionary here. Uh, an idea or thought that continuously preoccupies or intrudes on a person's mind. And I can tell you that I am obsessed with Top Gear. So imagine how upset I was when that came to an end. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd watched the original Top Gear on YouTube, all those 80s episodes are back. I'd watched all Clarkson's war documentaries, Hammond's stupid TV shows that he was on, James May's inventions, uh, T Clarkson's inventions that changed the world, all of these Did things. Did you go into mourning when it ended? 100%. Uh, you know, obviously, he should, you know, what happened shouldn't have happened and that's why he got let go. But mm -hmm. they continued on and made the grand tour, which was essentially just... Top Gear because it had all the producers and the, the lads back. And the budget. And the, oh my yes. god. Amazon has given them free reign. So when they asked me last week if I'd like to go over to London and interview three of my idols, uh, I took the, took the opportunity. Took the opportunity. Is that where you went? That's where I went. Remember I was gone? Oh, it the, disappeared. The, That's yeah. to meet your, meet your heroes. Now, I had to wake up earlier than I would normally wake up to do this show. I had to travel for most of the day. I only got nine minutes with each person and I was, I was you know, it was a lot, way longer a day than I'd be here and I was back at like midnight. But it was worth every minute. Well, it's worth it for a few reasons. One, obviously, because I finally got to tick that bucket list. Weirdly, it had been exactly nine years to the day that I had gone to Top Gear Live when they came to City West. And I actually said my Facebook post didn't get to Clark's. Oh, my Very strange, isn't it? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. So I did get to talk to Clark nine years later. And if you've ever, if you've ever met me or, or Cooper or Shia Testify, I don't really get, I don't really have any nerves. So to speak, you wouldn't call me a nervous person, would you? No. Yeah, we've interviewed You're many, many full people. Of, full of OTT confidence. Very confident. Yeah. My mum actually said that you are very sure of yourself. Very sure. Very sure. She's so nice. Yeah. He's cocksure. That's <laughs> a words. nice way of saying it, but, you know, yeah. overconfident. Well, later on, when we uh, get to hear the interview, and you can see it on our Instagram Live and our Facebook, I am nervous interviewing Clarkson. I am literally looking everywhere, <laughs> but I'm like, so how was that making that? You know? <laughs> Very strange to I, watch. I think you covered the nerves well. I think if you know you, you can sense that maybe there's a blind panic behind the eyes. <laughs> well, uh, being nervous and uh, it's showing is a fine though because it shows that you actually cared about the whole oh, thing. So, cute. so it's not, so don't be ashamed of I'm being nervous. I'm not ashamed. I'm just gets mad. Yeah. One of the first things he said to me is, "Oh my God, do you look like my daughter's boy boyfriend?" So instantly he hates you. Yeah, exactly. Ninety-eight <laughs> FM Big Breakfast. You can hear the full interview later on on the show. And you can also watch it live if you really want to on Instagram, uh, TV, and our Facebook. Cool. We have a traffic update for you on the way. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Still a bit shook. 98 FM. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh, brilliant. New game. All right, so on the way, uh, we're going to interview my idols, Jeremy Clarkson, Richard Hammond, and James May for the uh, brand new season of the Grand Tour. And if you've ever wanted to hear me nervous, well, you just have to stay tuned for another 20 minutes or so. Cool. We have an update on your oh. traffic next. Very better. Yeah. Uh, on the way. Um, oh yeah. Okay. So, well, a bucket list, I suppose, for me. I finally, got to interview my my idol and and two of the people that he does a show with, the Grand Tour. That's Jeremy Clarkson, James May, and Richard Hammond. Uh, you ever want to hear me nervous? You're about to. Just after half. <laughs> Hi. Hey. I really like cars. God. Lizzo juice to ninety eight FM. It's half past nine. You. I'm so embarrassed for me, so. Why? Scarlet now, a little bit. Why are you scarlet? So I ain't supposed to be, like, the presenter and stuff and all confident and everything. And the interview you're about to hear, I'm awfully shy. And As I said earlier on, when you said you were nervous, yeah. it, it shows you care. Okay, fine. <laughs> 98 FM's Dublin traffic. Is that sore throat strep? Find out with Lloyd's Pharmacy's new screening service. Do you want to tell us who you interview him? Uh, oh, I'm so scared for myself. Come on. Oh, it's like... Uh, sorry. 
uh, James May, Richard Hammond, and Jeremy Clarkson. Now, I know maybe that might mean a lot to you, but it means the world to me, and you're going to hear that in 60 seconds. Uh, oh. On the Lewis, there's currently no red Lewis line services operating between Blackhorse and the uh, the point there, both directions, due to technical fault as uh, James's uh, tickets are valid on Dublin bus. So have a great time on the bus today. There's a breakdown on the M50 northbound after Junction 13, Sandyford. It's blocking the right lane. Traffic is very slow in approach. Further along, a collision has been cleared at Furhouse and Tallow, but still big delays. On the M50 heading southbound is busiest from the M1 interchange to Junction 6 Blanch. Uh, still slow on the N3 from Clonney to the Blanch Town interchange and the M4 eastbound is improved between Maynooth and Salbridge and the city centre is filling up nicely. Everybody heading in to do Christmas shopping as well. Um, car parks, you've noticed it Luke? Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Jury Street like a lick. Yeah, like they literally had Gardy on the, the entrance for the car parks yeah. telling everybody he's like no it's full move <laughs> on so uh, if you're coming just hop on a bus or a Lewis if the Lewis is working obviously and uh, you won't be late with 98 James May hello congratulations thank you well Grand- I'm surviving yes. well, mm. Grand Tour is back and it's called Sea Men yes you have to say it like that don't you I think you are supposed to it wasn't my idea but no. it's a hilariously hilarious joke yeah. yes. I've been watching um, you three since I was very young oh, I'm sorry about that yes. it seemed really old uh, and again then on Dave and then you know again on Netflix and I've, I've watched just about every episode I'd say at least six times each you've got to find something else to do I in your life well right? I actually do my own like video reviews now of cars I started my own like brand on my radio that's program. a good idea because we don't do it anymore so yes. there's a there's a gap I just robbed all your ideas <laughs> oh, would you sort of you like almost pioneered the um, like lackluster you're like kind of like the anti-presenter uh, you're just yourself and you're just like here we are now yes to be honest I, I, I won't speak for the other two I can't really do it any other way because some of the ideas in it are now very old fashioned there's a lot of people in television making it who still believe that, that the audience is fooled by the magic of television whereas I think everybody everybody makes films now people make films on their phone they know what's happening so let's just show it as it is hmm. so I'll sit there and drive a car or stand there in the kitchen and make cheesy pasta <laughs> you, can, you can watch it or if you don't like it you can watch you or you know, yes it's exactly. great James May thank you so much thank you sir Mr Richard Hammond hello thank you for talking to me absolute pleasure I think you have been uh, yeah it, it was you the last time you were in Ireland for Top Gear you drove the MX-5 up the Dublin Mountains do you remember and you raced a greyhound Oh, that is a while ago. Yes, you're absolutely right. I did. Yes, this is, is my question. Is a, why haven't you been back? I know. I was, we have. We've been there to do our live shows several times. That you know, does count. It, it's Belfast. Apart from it does, because <laughs> we were there. That's right. Well, um, I saw you. <laughs> but uh, no, we haven't actually. You're right, and it's a bit of an oversight because it's fun to do. Place, yeah. It looks really pretty on camera. I love the specials. Obviously, the specials are by far the best thing you guys do because it's just beautiful locations and you're totally out of your comfort zone and this was really out of your comfort zone but I will kind of miss the track tests <laughs> will you miss them? I mean, it really was a clear message from the audience that the, the, the specials are the bits they loved I crashed it I, that has happened a couple of times yeah I know it's really really embarrassing is it in your contract? no <laughs> it's in my lack of talent um, I didn't do it on purpose right okay but I did do it yeah but it's nice that you can make a career out of it Instead of <laughs> retiring. Yeah, I, listen, I have to phone my wife. That's the difficult bit. Mm. Mr. Richard Hammond, thank you so much for talking to me. Absolute pleasure. Jeremy Clarkson. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a bit of a weird moment for both of us. One, apparently I look like your daughter's boyfriend. No, you don't look like my daughter's boyfriend. I'm absolutely convinced you are my ah. daughter's boyfriend, though I really didn't realise I had such a massive tattoo. Yes, that's uh, cool. I have to cover it up every time I yeah. see you. Uh, and then the, the weird part I'm, on my side is that uh, I probably watched every single thing you've ever done since you had the ridiculous hair back in the 80s. Santa, no. And now it turns out you look exa- and sound exactly the same. See, this is... You've even w- got the same... Are you from Dublin? Yeah. He's from Dublin. This is really, really... <laughs> <laughs> Are we ever going to talk about the Grand Tour? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you, you suggested that they, they go to Vietnam and Cambodia in this first episode of the new season. Mm-hmm. Have you ever suggested to do something and they just said, no. If the story's good, both James and Richard are wise and clever enough to go, no, that's, if the story's good. Mm. Um, the problem we have these days, if I may be serious for a moment, is so much of the world is now inaccessible. Ireland is always there. Always Ireland. But they, the Trump, no. I we can't. went there once, Hammond went there once, I think. To he did, he drove an MX-5 yeah. at Londello. He did. Yes, I, I'm going out with an Irish girl. Well, living with an Irish girl. Um, and so she's quite keen that we should go. Back there post Corbyn. No, wait, sorry, I said that out loud. Yeah, no, she's Dublin. My eldest daughter goes out with an Irish guy. 
It doesn't look like you at all anymore. Has it waned away no. now that I've had a bit of a chat with you, or is it still like? Oh, yeah. it's still your okay. voice is exactly the same. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, well, now, when you said that you were nervous and uh, you were uh, excited, obviously about uh, meeting your heroes, um, you actually did fangirl. Yeah, a lot on all three. Yeah, I like me curve videos. When as well. you said that, that's like me turning around oh. to like someone saying, "Yeah, I also make music." Oh, <laughs> I feel so scarlet. Oh, it's so, scarlet for so, no. It was really nice to no. hear them. It, Their voices it, as well. It's just like you, immediately you can see them, which is yeah. Cool. And they were all really nice. I know they all have reputations, especially Clarkson. But he, honestly. One of three of the nicest lads you could ever talk to. The full interviews will be up on uh, IGTV and uh, our Facebook as well. It sounds like you've bonded with uh, Jeremy Clarkson. Does this mean he's coming to your house for Christmas now? I'm going to just date his daughter. No. 98 FM Gossip, according to Luke.